Okay, in this lecture, we're going to continue with our section 3.8 material on forced vibrations or modeling the motion of a mass spring system with some periodic external forcing function. So in the previous lecture, we had considered a mass spring system with an external forcing function of some frequency gamma. And we were asking the question, what happens if there is no damping present? So in this lecture, we will consider this case of undamped forced vibrations. So let us suppose that there is no damping, that is, our damping constant B is zero. And we have a forcing function, which is periodic. So in this case, our equation of motion would be given by my double prime plus ky is equal to f naught times cosine of gamma t. So we have here a second order linear non-homogeneous equation with constant coefficients. And we know our first step in solving any non-homogeneous equation is to solve the corresponding homogeneous equation. So let's do a little scratch work to the side here. If we consider the homogeneous equation, m y double prime plus k y is equal to zero. And if we look for solutions of exponential form, y equals e to the rt power, then we get a characteristic equation of m r squared plus k is equal to zero. So it follows that r squared is equal to negative k over m. And so r is plus or minus the square root of k over m times i. Or as we saw in the previous section, we could call this square root of k over m omega. So we have complex conjugate roots plus or minus omega i, which means that our homogeneous solution would be of the form C1 cosine of omega t plus C2 times sine of omega t. Now our next step would be to find a particular solution which we could find making use of the method of undetermined coefficients, which requires us to determine the form of our particular solution. So in this case of no damping, the form of our particular solution will depend on whether that forcing frequency, gamma, of our external forcing function is the same as the natural frequency of the unforced system, omega, which we were saying is the square root of k over n. So we have two cases to consider in the case of undamped forced vibrations. The first case is if the external forcing function has a frequency gamma, which is different from the natural frequency omega of the unforced system. So in this case, we would consider a particular solution of the form capital Y is equal to A times sine of gamma T plus B times cosine of gamma T. And in this case, our general solution, which would be the sum of our homogeneous and particular solution, is a periodic function, which has a periodic variation in its amplitude. And this type of motion is what we call a beat. So here in the figure, we have the graph of a displacement function, y of t, for a mass spring system 
with no damping, which is being forced by a periodic forcing function whose frequency is different from the natural frequency. So we see here that we have a periodic solution and there's this variation in amplitude which is occurring. So this type of motion is what's referred to as a beat. And then our second case would be if the forcing function has a frequency gamma, which is the same as the natural frequency of the homogeneous solution, omega. So in this case, we would have to consider a particular solution of the form, capital Y is equal to A times T sine of gamma, which is the same as omega T, plus B times T cosine of gamma, which is the same as omega T. So in this case that gamma is equal to omega, for our particular solution, we can't just consider a constant times sine or cosine of omega T because a constant multiple of cosine omega T or sine of omega T were already part of the homogeneous solution. So our particular solution would then have this form A times T sine or A uh, um, B times T cosine. And in this case, our general solution, which would be the sum of our homogeneous and particular solutions, is periodic with an increasing amplitude. As T increases, our particular solution is oscillating but with an increasing amplitude. And this type of motion is what's called resonance. So here in the figure, we see an example of resonance where if we are forcing the mass spring system with the same frequency of its uh, natural uh, motion, then the displacement becomes larger and larger from equilibrium. And this is again called resonance. So let's look at some examples of modeling a mass spring system which is undamped and being forced. So in this first example, we are considering the equation of motion for some undamped system. It's given by y double prime plus 4y is 2 cosine of t with the initial displacement and initial velocity given. And we are asked to solve this initial value problem and then sketch our solution versus time. So our first step in solving any non-homogeneous equation would be to solve the corresponding homogeneous equation. So let us consider the equation y double prime plus 4y is equal to 0. And if we look for solutions of the form y equals e to the rt, then r satisfies the characteristic equation r squared plus 4 is equal to 0. And so r would be plus or minus 2i. So our homogeneous solution would have the form C1 cosine of 2t plus C2 sine of 2t. And we call this the transient solution when we talk about a mass spring system. And now we need to find a particular solution. So let's make use of the method of undetermined coefficients 
where we will make some assumption about the form of our particular solution. And we see here that our forcing function is a constant times cosine of t. And so the frequency of this forcing function is 1, which is different from the natural frequency of my unforced system, my homogeneous solution. So in the case that these frequencies are different, we would be looking for a particular solution of the form A times sine of t plus B times cosine of t. And so taking our derivatives to substitute into the non-homogeneous equation, we find y prime is a cosine of t minus b sine of t. And our second derivative is negative a sine t minus b cosine t. So substituting into our non-homogeneous equation, we're looking for y double prime plus 4y, which needs to equal 2 cosine of t. So let's see what we have for y double prime plus 4y. If we group the sine terms, we would have 4a minus a, which leaves us 3a sine t. And then grouping the cosine terms, uh, we would have 4b minus b, so 3b cosine of t. And this has to equal 2 cosine t. So equating the coefficients, we find that a has to be 0, since there is no sine term on the right-hand side. And 3b has to equal 2, so b is 2 thirds. So we find that our particular solution, capital Y, is given by 2 thirds cosine of t, And so our general solution, y of t, is given by c1 cosine of 2t plus c2 sine of 2t plus my particular solution, which was 2 thirds cosine of t. And to apply my initial conditions, well, since one of my initial conditions involves y prime, I need to find the derivative of this general solution. And y prime would be a negative 2c1 sine of 2t plus 2c2 cosine of 2t minus 2 thirds sine t. So let's apply these initial conditions. We have y evaluated at 0 is equal to c1 plus 2 thirds. And we were told this has to equal 1. So it follows that c1 must be 1 third. And evaluating our derivative, y prime, at t equals 0, we are left with 2c2, and we were told this value has to be 2. So it follows that c2 is 1. In substituting these constants back into our general solution, we find that y of t is given by uh, c1, which was 1 third, 
cosine of 2t plus c2, which was 1 sine of 2t, plus 2 thirds cosine t. So this would be the solution of that initial value problem. And here in the notes, I've given the graph of that function, y of t. And we see that we have a periodic solution with this periodic variation in amplitude. So this type of motion is called a beat. Since the frequency of our external forcing function was different from the natural frequency of the unforced system, the frequency of our uh, transient or homogeneous solution. So let's look at another example. Here we are asked to consider the equation of motion for an undamped system given by y double prime plus 9y is 2 cosine of 3t, where our initial displacement and initial velocity are given. So we're asked to solve that initial value problem and sketch our solution versus time. So again, our first step in solving any non-homogeneous equation is to solve our homogeneous equation. So let us consider the corresponding homogeneous equation, y double prime plus 9y is equal to 0. So if we look for solutions of the form y equals e to the rt power, then our characteristic equation is r squared plus 9 equals 0. And so r would be plus or minus 3i. We have complex conjugate roots. And so our homogeneous solution, or transient solution, would be of the form c1 cosine of 3t plus c2 sine of 3t. And to find our particular solution, we could make use of the method of undetermined coefficients. So if we look at the form of our forcing function, we have a constant times cosine of 3t. But we see that that is already part of the homogeneous solution, a constant multiple of cosine 3t. So for our particular solution, we're going to consider something of the form capital Y is A times T sine of 3T plus B times T cosine of 3T. And to solve for A and B, we need to substitute this function into our non-homogeneous equation. So I need to find my first two derivatives. So looking at y prime, making use of the product and chain rule, uh, we would have a times sine of 3t plus 3at cosine of 3t uh, plus b cosine of 3t minus 3 times b t uh, sine of 3t. And for my second derivative, I have a 6a cosine of 3t minus 
a t sine of 3t minus 6b sine of 3t minus 9b t cosine of 3t. So substituting into our non-homogeneous equation, we're looking for y double prime plus 9y, which needs to equal 2 times cosine of 3t. And so summing these terms, let's see what we have if we group like terms. So starting with the t sine of 3t terms. When we take y double prime and we add 9 times y, those terms cancel. And similarly, grouping the t times cosine of 3t terms, when we take y double prime plus 9y, those terms will cancel one another. And so we are left with for uh, the remaining terms of y double prime, a 6a cosine of 3t minus 6b sine of 3t, which has to equal 2 cosine of 3t. So equating our coefficients, it follows that 6a has to be 2, so a is 1 third, and b has to be 0, since there was no sine of 3t term for our forcing function. So substituting these values into the form of our particular solution, we find our particular solution is given by one third t sine of 3t. And so our general solution is given by the sum of our homogeneous solution and particular solutions, giving us c1 cosine of 3t plus c2 sine of 3t plus our particular solution, which was 1 third t sine of 3t. And now to apply my initial conditions, I need to find the derivative of this general solution. So here y prime would be given by negative 3c1 sine of 3t plus 3c2 cosine of 3t uh, plus 1 third sine of 3t uh, plus t times cosine of 3t. So let's apply our initial conditions to solve for the constants c1 and c2. If we evaluate the general solution at time zero, we are left with just C1, which we were told has to be one. And evaluating the derivative at time zero, we have three C2. We were told that this has to be zero, so C2 is then zero. And substituting those values into our general solution, we find that y of t is given by c1, which was 1, cosine of 3t, plus 0 for c2, and then plus our particular solution, which was 1 third t sine of 3t.
So we found our solution, and in the notes, I've given the graph of that solution. And we see that as t increases, we have oscillations occurring because of the sine and cosine of three t terms. But the amplitude of our oscillations is increasing. So here, we have uh, resonance. Since our frequency of the forcing function was equal to the frequency of the unforced system, that is, frequency of our homogeneous solution, uh, we see resonance occur. 